hundred years, all Europe listened with fascination to the spellbinding legends of a fabulous treasure. It was kept in this castle in France, well guarded. And through the years, few were the eyes that gazed upon the many diamonds, pearls, emeralds, sapphires, and rubies. Yes, jewels which had been the pride and price of queens, red with blood. For the history of every costly great stone is a story of violence and death and mystery. And the strangest of mysteries is about the treasure of Monte Cristo. But the treasure of Monte Cristo disappeared a little more than 30 years ago. What has this to do with modern-day San Francisco? That is what interests me very much, and you too. San Francisco, population 785,000. A major Pacific Coast seaport. Temperate planet. But it's not a city to be explained in statistics. For I have walked its streets, and I've seen many strange things and heard strange stories. And the strangest of them all concerns the treasure of Monte Cristo. It all began right in the heart of the city, on Market Street. Mr. Dandies, here we are. <sighs> Smell that air. Kind of fishy, huh? Fishy? I wish I could put it in the bottle and take it with me the next time I ship out. <sighs> it's been two years since I smelled that. <laughs> well, I haven't missed it. Maybe my nose is a bit more particular. Well, what's it gonna be, Mr. Dandies? The girls, gay times? Maybe a little bit of both. But first, I'm gonna see my old friend, the Torricellis. Oh, is that the Italian family you grew up with? Yep. Only family I've ever known. Well, I'm on my way. I've got to look in on the boys at the hiring hall. Say, Bosom, do me a favor. Take my bag with you, huh? Sure thing. Thanks. Good luck. Good luck to you, sir. She's loose! <laughs> Thank you. 
Better get out of here. I want to thank you for your help tonight. Forget it, it was nothing. Tell me, who were those guys? They were guards. Guards? Oh, they probably refer to themselves as nurses. My nurses. You see, I escaped from, from an asylum. An house? Well, they called it a sanitarium. My name is Jean Turner. Hi, Jean. I'm Dante, Edmund Dante. Tell me, how did you escape and why? The name Jean Turner doesn't mean much to you, does it? No. Just a pretty name for a pretty girl, that's all. Then you've never heard of me, Turner Utilities? Oh, no. Not the billion dollar baby. That's me. Thing makes less sense than ever. What were you doing in a sanitarium? My father died and left a lot of money. And there's some people that want to make sure that I don't get it. Okay, sounds stupid. I still don't get it. Well, the Turner Estate is a trust. It reverts to me when I marry or when I'm 25. Whichever is first. I'm still single and I'll be 25 in less than three months. Well, some guy's going to make himself a flock of dough. And he's going to get a very beautiful babe when he marries you. She might also be a dead babe. If I die, the entire estate becomes a charitable foundation under the absolute control of my guardian. Oh, I get it at last. I mean, your guardian wouldn't mind knocking you off for all they do, huh? Exactly. That's why they put me in this so-called sanitarium for my nerves. They claimed I suffered from delusions of persecution. It's been a slow process. They would have gotten me out of the way before long. Order, please. Two coffees, please. Well, I guess we can relax now. Yeah. For the minute. You can't keep on running. You're lucky if you're going to give out. Listen, sister, there's only one sensible thing to do, and that's go to the cops. Going to the police will only open that asylum door again. We can explain. Any court in the world will listen. They can't get away with anything like that. My guardian has connections. He'll swear and he'll have witnesses to back him up that I'm a mental incompetent, a victim of delusions. 
What happened tonight is no delusion. I'll swear to that. Well, you'd be dressed aside. And if you became too insistent, I don't stand a chance. Well, there's something we can do. Somebody will listen. Bus now loading at gig four for Sacramento, Reno, Salt Lake, and all points east. Maybe there is a chance. But I couldn't ask or expect you to do it. What do you mean, do what? It's crazy, but it might work. It's a chance. And I'm desperate enough to crutch at anything. My father's will gives me the money when I'm 25 or married. 1130 bus now leaving for Sacramento, Reno, Salt Lake, and all points east. Loading at gate four. Have your tickets ready. Will you marry me? Please listen before saying anything. I don't mean a real marriage. That is, well, is a real husband and wife, but a name only. <laughs> listen, honey, a gal like you doesn't have to go around asking a guy like me to marry her. Oh, I know it sounds crazy, but it's my one chance to slip from my guardian's control. Well, suppose I did. They still want to murder you. No, don't you see? It would get them nothing. The entire estate would go to my husband. It would be taken from their hands. Look, honey, you don't know a thing about me. I'm a second mate on a freighter. You don't want me to marry oh, you. Oh, it doesn't matter. The marriage would only be for three months, and then I'll be safe. Peace of mind can't be counted in money. I'll pay you $10,000 if you'll... 10000 Oh, if that's not enough, whatever you want. Look, sister, I've never considered marriage as a matter of money. It's not something you buy or sell. It's something serious. Don't you see? This is different. A technicality, a legal fiction. For you, maybe. But I never looked at it that way. Legal fiction, eh? Well, it's an easy way to look at it. But I never considered it that casual. If it was that, I wouldn't be asking it. Will you give me two to Reno, please? Yes, sir. Can we catch this bus? Yes, sir. Right through there. and personnel of the Reno Towers Hotel takes great pleasure in extending their most sincere and hearty felicitations upon your marriage and face the very best wishes for a long and prosperous life of blissful unity. Thanks. Oh, and if there's anything you want, what could you want? Well, just goes to show you. That's not a maid part, and I'm a husband today. Only technically. Champagne cocktails, courtesy of the Reno Towers Hotel. No extra charge on our own expense, special deluxe wedding number seven. Well, come on, let's dive in. No use letting it go flat. Here's to the all expense special deluxe wedding number seven. And to my bride, technically. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? It's a beautiful day, a wonderful honeymoon, a gorgeous bride, handsome husband. There's nothing to cry about. Just touch that. Do you want to wreck this nice new negligee that's been included in the all expense special deluxe wedding number seven for a slight extra charge? It was wrong of me. I shouldn't have asked you. Would you please wipe those eyes? Honeymoon is not a place for tears. But you don't know what it may mean for you. What I. I do. Start us the run of my life. We'll probably only live to be a hundred and have twenty children. What a time. 
are crimes against humanity committed in the name of service. Wow. Oh, special honeymoon breakfast, no ex charge on our all expense special deluxe wedding number seven. Uh, the orange blossom for my own idea. Gee, thanks. Wow. Madame Mapor, how do you like your toast? Buttered or just thrown at you? <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, the phone. That's my thing. Yes? All right. Don't tell me that's more of good old number seven. No, wrong number. Oh. Oh, no cigarettes. No, no cigarettes, not even pipe tobacco. Eddie, would you mind going down to the lobby and get me a pack? Are you kidding? I'll call room service. No, don't bother them, and it'll give me a chance to dress. Oh. All right. Black? Yes. I'll give you exactly 20 minutes. Eddie. What? Don't. Don't what? I'll feel more comfortable if you carry this. You shouldn't walk around and protect it. <laughs> what about this now? Please. All right. Oh, honey. I've been a lot of places, Shanghai, London, Paris. I've seen a lot and done a lot. But I don't know anything that means... that meant... Please, what were you going to say? Nothing. Except wish you didn't have so much money. Darling, it's not my fault. Can't you forget it, at least just for a little while? I'll try. Okay, honey. Cigarettes coming up.
told you all I can say. But not all you know. All I know, all I can say, all there is to it. This is the automatic you were carrying. And this is the bullet that killed him. It's the same caliber as your gun. But I never used the gun. I know, you were waiting for a streetcar in that attic with an empty chamber in your gun. I told you the shot came from the back of him. And it was just an accident that this ejected cartridge was found on the floor right where you were crouching. I don't know anything about it. The place was full of junk. According to the police laboratory reports, this particular piece of junk under the microscope shows it was fired by your gun. I don't know anything about a gun. I told you why I went there. That is. You don't look like a crook. And you have no record. I want to help you. I want to give you a break. But you've got to help me. You go before a jury with this bedtime story you've been bedtime telling me. Bedtime story, I told you every word is the truth. You're a sensible man, Dandy. Now let's forget the alibis and stop kidding. We've got you dead to rights. Put it up to a jury and you'll go to a gas chamber. But you tell me a straight story and I'll go to the DA myself. I'll promise you he'll go easy on you. Thanks. So I get off with life, is that it? No, you're being practical. Good behavior and parole. Six, seven years. Now let's start at the beginning and, and give it to me straight. I don't know anything about a gun. I didn't kill a man. I went there to find my wife. I know. I know. I know it all by heart. Maybe you're nuts. Half the police psychiatrists will say we're nuts, too, for not believing you are. Why else would any guy in his right mind keep repeating such a senseless story? We've told you. It's a respectable boarding house, not a sanitarium, and certainly not an asylum. And the man you killed... I didn't. The man you killed was not a kidnapping hoodlum. He was a respectable, hard-working businessman named Matthew Benson, employed steadily for the last 12 years by the Apex Warehouse and Storage Company, one of the city's oldest... Well, why don't you do what I've been asking you? Hello? Yes? Oh? Fine, fine, in a minute. What were we saying? Find my wife. And what good would that do you? She'll prove to you that everything I've been trying to tell you is the truth. Your wife would? Hmm. You're speaking of Jean Turner, the heiress, yes, of course. Yes, yes, but you get it through your head she's in danger. I wouldn't worry about her if I were you. Okay, fine. Go ahead, take it out on me because I'm here on suspicion of murder. What kind of police are you not to try to investigate when the safety of a completely innocent person is at stake? Meaning your wife? Yes, meaning my wife. She needs help. She needs it right away. Well, supposing we ask her. Excuse me, Miss Turner. Miss Miss Turner, do you know this man? Never saw him before. That's not Jean Turner. For your information, that is, this is Miss Jean Turner of the Turner Utility family. And her father is not dead, and she has no guardian, and she's never been kidnapped, and she's certainly not married to you. Most assuredly not. And she believes you're just as big a liar as we do. Thank you, Miss Turner. We appreciate your coming down here to clear up this little matter. Please, Carl, take you anywhere you want to go. My car's downstairs, thank you. Good day. Good day. Well. Look, I've been telling you the truth all along. Please find my wife. She'll explain everything. You heard that girl. Deny it to your face. She's not Jean Turner. You have your rights, Standies, and as a cop, I'll respect them. But I'm not saying what I won't do as a man if you keep handing me that blarney. Come in. Took you long enough. Well, I had to wait till business slacked up down at the counter. One guy took an hour to finish. I couldn't pull a plate away from him, especially when he had a badge under it. <laughs> I, uh, uh, here's your cream. Hey, could you use a good mouthpiece? I know, just the guy. I'd let him handle my own mother on a murder rap. How about it, huh? Okay. Just remember, keep your trap shut and don't let these flat feet pin nothing on you, eh? <laughs> nothing. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll be back for the empties later, huh? All right. Yes? Norris is here. He's got the girl. She admits she's Jean Turner. Send them in. Jean, I'm so glad you... Are you Jean Turner? Yes. Where did you pick her up? Empire Hotel on Sutter Street. That's her name, all right. I also checked with the uh, Reno police on the address that she had put on the marriage license. And that bunch of this guy's story checks anyway. No, will you believe me? Quiet, sit down. Did you marry this man in Reno? Yes. Did you tell him you were the Turner heiress? Heiress? I'm a stenographer. Where do you work? In a lawyer's office, 153 Market Street. But, Jean, you don't understand. 
I'll do the talking. Do you happen to have a guardian? What would I have a guardian for? Oh, don't ask me. Not my idea. The three men tried to kidnap you. Kidnap me? Is this some kind of a joke? Then this knight around didn't gallop up and try to save you from three thugs? How did you meet? Well, he uh, just picked me up, I guess. His ship came in, we had a few drinks, maybe a few too many, and then we decided to get married. Go on. We took a bus to Reno. I was sobered up by morning and realized what a fool I'd been marrying a man I hardly knew on a drunken impulse. So I walked out on him. That's all I know up to the time this detective of yours brought me down here. Oh, you're lying to him. You're lying. You've had your chance to talk. From now on, I'll carry on this conversation. Did you ever own a gun? A gun? This one? No, I've never owned one. Did you ever stay, no, or visit anyone at 2015 Franklin Street? What's he done? What's happened? That's all. You may go. You're not going to believe that joke. Shut up. For well, just a minute. One more thing. Let me see your lipstick. You always use this shade? Yes. It's a little off my beat. Seems almost orange. Strictly for blondes? Yes. It's called Summer Blossom. I'm afraid I'll have to keep this. I'll have to use it as an exhibit. You know, we've wound up executing men for just one little slip like this. Execute? Good luck. Don't answer any questions. I'll do the talking. Inspector, I object to this third degree method used on my client. I object to intimidation. And I object to his rights being abused. You can stop objecting. I think the murder rap will hold. Murder? Is that the charge against him? In addition to a few odds and ends, like forcible entry, burglary, and such, but murder is the main one. Persecution of my clan on a mere unfounded suspicion is a violation of his constitutional rights. And I shall demand an immediate investigation. Turn off the phonograph record. Take the prisoner to his cell. Come along. But, Inspector, can I do anything? No, you may go. Just keep yourself available. But I... You heard the Inspector. Probably done enough for my client anyway. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, those are people locking you up uh, before we get a chance to see you. Yeah, you giving us spaghetti and wine? Wait till Mama hears about this, she'll kill us. <laughs> Two years we no see you. Then we come back from trip to catch the fish, and the dummies are reading the newspaper that you know the one that pays the trouble. Why you not tell us about yourself? Well, what's the idea? No use getting your friends mixed up in a mess like this. Hey, no. you want me to give you one the biggest smack of her say that's it? That's what the friends are for. See, I say to boys, uh, we go right down to police station. We make those cops to let you go. Uh, police, yes, good ball, see. Quiet there. Where do you think you are? You, 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 you flat the beach. You want to put us all in jail? How are we going to help them? Oh, let him on the beat, yes. Carpal, please, non polari. We told him not to come with us. He gets too excited. Uh, see, boys say they no want to me come and see you. Say I'm uh, too old for go running around. <laughs> me, too old. I go for the fish uh, six weeks at one time in all the kinds of weather. <laughs> they go for the fish uh, three days, maybe get a little bit wet, and they think that they got it rough. Bah! That's right, Papa. They don't make real men anymore. What the for you go kill this guy, huh? Over women? <laughs> I think I understand. Over money? <gasps> That's a bad. Wife's outside to see it, Eddie. Hey, what's this business about the wife? I'll tell you about it later, Papa. She can't come in with this gang, ladies. All right, thanks, thanks. We'll be back to see you tomorrow, Eddie. Right. And don't forget, if there's anything you want, just let us know. Thanks, sir. Come on, Papa. So long, Papa. Papa. Thanks. 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 So long. Right. So
Hello, Eddie. How do you feel? Hey, where is she? Who? My wife. The jailer says she's waiting. Is that so? Wonder what she's up to now. Get her in here. Once we wring the truth out of her, we're okay. Look, I don't think we'd better. It'd be smart if I talk to her first. You know, sort of sound her out. Sound her out? What for? She's the answer to my whole problem. Get her in here. Look, you don't seem to realize she's not on your side, Eddie. She's responsible for you being in here. She's not to be trusted. Trusted? Who wants to trust her? I want to get face to face with her. Now, wait a minute. I happen to be your attorney, and I'm going to handle this case my way if we're going to get an acquittal. You can't seem to get her through your head. She lied to the police, you and everybody else. There's no reason for her to suddenly make a change now. If you talk to her, you could wring the truth out of her. All right, I'll talk to her. Right away. Sure. She's the key to the whole situation. Use it when she gets on the stand. Look, our one chance in this case is they can't force a wife to testify against her husband. Now, unless she tells us the whole truth, the smartest thing we can do is keep her out of that courtroom. If she doesn't tell you the truth, let me get my hands on her. I'll make her talk. Now, relax. Take it easy. Let me handle this my way. See you tomorrow, Eddie. Right. Don't forget. Jailer. What are you doing here? I'll ask the questions. Why don't you go see Dante's? Tell him the truth, maybe? What do you mean? Real innocent, aren't you? <gasps> Fresh your memory, any? I don't want to be part of this. You haven't got much choice. A pretty girl. Very pretty. It's a shame you're not as smart. You can't tell me what to do. I am. I got enough on you to put you in cold storage for a long time. You want to stay pretty? <coughs> Keep away from Donnie's and stay out of this case. I didn't bargain for murder. I'm not bargaining. I'm telling you. Play with dynamite and it's liable to go off in your pretty face. You understand one another now? Night, Jean. say the murdered man came to his death? By a bullet wound fired from close quarters, which entered his right side and passed through the body. In your opinion, doctor, could the bullet have entered the body from a position in front or from a position behind? Well, that would depend. Had he been standing with his left side inclined towards the defendant, then one could say that it had been fired from in front. But if with his right side, then, equally well, it might have been fired from behind. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions. You're with us. No questions. Papa, give him the letters. Please, give the piece of letters to my boy. Where? Have you seen this gun before? Yes. How can you identify that particular gun? By the serial number, A45692. How can you be so positive as to that serial number? Because according to law, I enter the number of all the guns bought and sold in my pawn shop in this ledger. Uh, here's the entry. Colt, 25 caliber automatic, serial number A, Four, five, six, nine, two. And according to your records, who bought this gun and when? E. Dantes, May 14th, 1949, 8.55 p.m. The 
same date on which Edmund Dantley's ship, the Pacific Queen, arrived in San Francisco. Now, sir, look carefully at the defendant. Can you identify the defendant, Edmund Dantes, as the one who bought the murder weapon from you on that night? Uh, I didn't see his face too well. Look at him closely, Mr. Johnson. Is he the man? It could be. Same size, same build, but I'm not positive. I can't swear it was him. And I can't swear it wasn't. That is all. Thank you. You're with me. No questions. I was never in that shop in my life. Why don't you do something? Look, that's bad tactics. There's plenty of tricks in this profession. I'll pull them at the right time. Take it easy. Let me handle this. And did any strangers either enter or leave the hotel at or about the time previously indicated in the record? No. And did anyone either precede or follow them through the lobby? Nope. Thank you. No further questions. No cross-examination. You positively remember the defendant having visited the nightclub the evening in question? Yes, sir. And what makes you so positive? Well, he left without paying. And I got stuck for the check. <laughs> Did you see any person or persons searching the nightclub as alleged by the defendant? No, sir. Did it look to you in any way that the defendant and his companion were being pursued? No, sir. That is all. No further questions. You're a witness. No cross-examination. You are in charge of the ballistic section of the police department. Yes, sir. Have you, in the course of your duty, had occasion to examine the exhibits which have been marked as Exhibit A and Exhibit B? Yes, sir. Can you state if the cartridge found at the scene of the crime was fired by the defendant's gun? Positively. On that table are the enlargements of the cartridge. The markings correspond exactly with the markings on the weapon in question. And can you identify the bullet which was taken from the body of the deceased? The bullet was embedded in the wall, so the markings are blurred, but it definitely was a bullet from an automatic of that caliber. Thank you, sir. No further questions? Your witness. No questions. Bail for you, Dandies. Lawyers here. Hello, Eddie. Got good news for you. Just had the judge sign the order for your appeal. You know, just between you and me, I know the right people. Yeah. Why didn't you use them? I told you my wife is the answer to this whole mystery. Why didn't you put her on the stand? Look, Eddie, you don't seem to understand how that'd have been for you. Been for me? What do you think the situation is? I've been condemned to death in the gas chamber. There's only one of us seems to realize that. Take it easy. Don't get excited. You'll look at things in a different light tomorrow. Look, we're not licked yet. Yeah. I'm not licked yet. Thanks for nothing, Jackson. You've been a great help. Jenna.
Jailer. Jailer. What is it? Will you please call these people for me? Tell them it's very important. They've got to see them. All right. Thanks. The account number is made out to Edmund Dandy's Marseille, France. If you got that, we have much time. The date is August 7, 1915. But you wasn't even a born of them. I know. Papa, think hard. What can you remember? About Eddie's folks, eh? his father. Well, I tell a story to Eddie when he's a little fella. It's a just a light now. Eddie's a papa was a French soldier who got a kill early in the World War I. Then Eddie's a grandpapa, Santa Eddie, and Eddie's a mama here to San Francisco so they know she'd get hurted. Then the grandpapa, he's a come along a little later on. But he's a die when the uh, heart gives the attack uh, two days after arrival. Eddie's a mama was a fine woman. But does she no have the money? And she no can get the help from France because of the war. Eddie's a mama very sad when she loses the husband in the battle. She, uh, she no seem want to live. Then the flu sickness come. Oh, she very sick. Much a fever. Cry out all the time. Eddie's a have a great name. See, all the time she say in a fever, Eddie's a have a great name. But I think he's a fever talking. I know they much a bench. Then, then she die. So I look after the little Bambino, and I bring up just like a one son from me. He grow up a fine man. That, that's all I know. That's not the way I remember you telling it. Doesn't help to figure this one out, does it? No. The car number's Edmund Dant. He's Marseille, France. But Marseille is one of the few ports I've never touched. I can't figure it out. Look, this is what I want you to do. Can you see that close, Mike? Yeah. Evidently, this guy, Mason, mailed it weeks before I hit port. Look him up. Find out what all this means. You've been in all the newspapers. He should have read about you. Yeah. Why didn't he do something? I don't know. There's a lot of things about this case I don't know. But this is the only smell of a clue I've had. Try to get some answers for you if we can. Good. Hurry up. I haven't much time. They're going to ship me across the bay in the morning. Mamma mia. San Quentin. Can't your lawyer do something? From now on, I'm doing everything myself. You boys better do a good job now, or I beat the devil up to you. Okay, Papa, so long, so long. Adios. Oh, Mama, 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 Regulations. They figure you guys do for San Quentin. Well, we're supposed to keep an eye on you. Figure I might try to escape, huh? Just one way. I get it. Speak first. We've had them take that way out before when they've lost hope. Well, I'm not the type. There is no type. Anyone uh, ever make an escape? When we used to take them over to San Quentin by ferry boat in the old days, some of them made getaways. But not now, huh? Not a chance. Old days, we had several transfer points. That was bad. Now we got the perfect one-way setup. No loophole, huh? Not a one. You treat us guys pretty good, don't you? The best is none too good for our guests. You get a nice protected ride in the sheriff's station wagon. Over the scenic Golden Gate Bridge, through marvelous countryside, right into picturesque San Quentin. Right. Find out. That stuff in the warehouse is nothing but junk. It's been stored there for over 30 years. What about Mason? The news isn't good. Did you find him? Yeah, only he got his head half split open. What? That's right. And the funny angle is, it happened on exactly the same day as the postmark on that letter. 
He's dead. No, but he might as well be. He's out at the county hospital, a paralytic case now. He can't move or talk. The nurses, they don't know whether he'll ever get any better. Who is he? He's a lawyer. And from what I gather, not a very good one. Some sort of a shyster. Never had any dough. Strictly small time. One blind alley after another. Yeah. We went up to Mason's office in a 153 Market Street building, too. There's nobody there. 153 Market Street building? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My lawyer has an office in my building. He's in the same office. Are you sure? Well, he's got his name on the door. My wife works for a lawyer there. Does she know Jackson? I don't know. They're supposed to be strangers. At least they pretend to be. Well, you sure got a phony defense if I ever saw one from that lawyer. I know, and I told him so, too. He's got me all set to sit over in San Quentin waiting for the gas chamber while he pretends to fix up my appeal. What's his story? I don't know, but I gotta find out. I don't know how, but I'm going to. You know that hole off the Presidio where we used to fish for those big striped bass when we were kids? Sure do. You just don't think it's beach. That's right. Gee, we used to pick up some pretty fish in there. Still fish there? No, nah, that was kid stuff. We operate off Half Moon Bay now. What do you mean, kid stuff? There are plenty of good fish left in there. <laughs> Listen, they're picking me up at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning in the chef's station wagon. You know where the Presidio Road runs parallel to the approach of Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah. You gotta stop me there. I don't know how, but we'll find some way. Fine. You want some clothes? Yes. My new suit, my hat, my briefcase. Bring yeah. a whole bunch of them. Right. You can count on us. Well, you know, we better get going. Mom doesn't like us to come home late for dinner. Yeah, I remember. See you, Eddie. I'll be seeing you, Eddie. So long. Thanks. break from San Quentin station wagon, 500 yards west of Golden Gate Bridge approach. Last seen in light-colored packet, four-door sedan. Block all bridge exit. Prisoner is Edmund Dantes, convicted murderer. Height six feet two, brown hair, gray eyes, age about 30. Check all railroad, bus and airplane depots. Block all highways.
Attack coming. ship you out of the country and you'll be safe. No, Tony, I can't do that. They'd be after me the rest of my life. I gotta go back there. I gotta tackle this thing now. Another car. You're crazy. By now, every cop in San Francisco has memorized that pan of yours. They'll comb every alley. You're right. With good clothes and cleaned up, nine out of ten cops won't give me a tumble. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to talk to my wife. She's got the answer to some questions I'm going to ask. How can you be so stupid? Cops aren't dumb. That's exactly what they figure you'll do. Why, half the plainclothes men in town are planted around her right now. I know. That's why I want you two to follow her. Find out when she leaves the office, where she eats. But keep me posted. Where? I'll be at the Fairmont Hotel. The Fairmont Hotel? Now I know you're nuts. Nothing but the best. I'll be registered as Bernard Ainsley, Vice President of the International Equipment Corporation of New York. You got it? Got it. Well, I guess even Vice Presidents have use for this stuff. Papa sent it. Thank Papa for me. God bless him. Good luck, Eddie. Thanks. Your order, please. Coffee, please. Just coffee. How are you? How have you been? You must be mad. Just listening to the point. They had a plane closed in on my trail every time I stepped in the street. You have a nice vacation? You know, I was in Mexico once. Found it a fascinating place. Tell me what's behind this. And this time I want the truth. Eddie, believe me. I didn't know it would go this far. My name's really Jean Turner, but that's only a coincidence. Possibly that's where Jackson got the idea in the first place. You work for him? I work for Jackson and Mason. Mason isn't exactly an angel. He's shady and he's tricky. But he hasn't the courage to be dangerous. 
Jackson had. What's a racket? Hunting heirs and swindling beneficiaries, if possible. How do I fit into that? When they discovered that you were an heir to a fortune. Me? Who left it? Come on. Tell me the details. I don't know all the details. What do you mean you don't know the details? You worked for them, didn't you? You had your reasons for marrying me, and it certainly wasn't love. It wasn't for love? No, it wasn't for love then. It all started when Benson, the man you were convicted of killing, came into the office with a warehouse receipt. A warehouse receipt? Wait a minute. Is this it? That's it. Mason told me he was going to fool Jackson, that he was going to handle his case legitimately, and that the attorney fees would keep him for the rest of his life. He thought it was a good joke on Jackson. But Jackson somehow got wind of it. Go on, go on. What happened? Jackson checked on you completely and waited for you to arrive. He staged everything. Everything except my... my falling in love with you. Eddie, you've got to leave. It's too dangerous. I'm running that risk. Talk fast. Please believe me. I'm not lying. You know, I do believe you. But you still haven't told me how you got mixed up in this. Well, I had a half check concession in a nightclub. And I was stupid enough to act as, well, I suppose you'd call it a post office for a smuggler. But I didn't have any idea what those packages contained. I just passed them on. And when the peddler was arrested, I... Jackson was his lawyer, and he threatened to expose me. Oh, I was frightened out of my wits. So whatever he told me to do, I did. I was too scared to disobey. It's very pretty. You marry me, I get framed for murder. I die in San Quentin all legally and nicely, and that fortune you speak of goes to you. But I wouldn't have gotten a fortune. Jackson made me sign papers that gave him a power of attorney. Oh, that's great. That means as long as I'm alive, you're safe. But with me out of the way, you're the next one. I hadn't thought about that. No. There's a lot of things you didn't think of. I was all confused, but I'm all right now. I'm going to the police. They won't believe you. Maybe not, but I'm going to go anyway. Well, you better leave. I'll get in touch with you as soon as I can. Here. Take this. It's the key to Jackson's office. You'll have trouble breaking into the file. But you may find something there that will help you. How do I know this isn't another one of your tricks? There's a $5,000 reward on you. To collect it, all I have to do is call Nora. Sorry. I'll wait here until Nora starts after you. Don't worry about Nora. I'll have him take me in. The doctor won't be in until later. You may see your uncle only a few minutes. Visiting hours are almost over now. Is he... His mind is sound, but he is otherwise completely paralyzed. I know he'll be glad to see someone of his family. Pardon me. Move your eyes. Back and forth. Move them from left to right. And move them from left to right for yes. You understand? That's it. Try right to left for no. That's fine. Right to left for no, left to right for yes. That's right. Did you send me this?
Is there something of value in that warehouse? Does it concern me? Does Jackson know what it is? Is Jackson the one that slugged you? Is he my enemy? Do you know anything about the murder of Matthew Benson? What's in that warehouse, Mason? Look, we'll do it as a sort of an animal, vegetable, mineral game. Is it animal? I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to leave. Couldn't I stay a little longer? Hospital regulation. You may return tomorrow. Remember, we don't want to excite our patients. Of course. Well, good luck. I'll be back, Uncle Henry. What are his chances? Will he ever talk again? In time, probably. He's showing some improvement. Of course, you can hope for nothing more than partial recovery. How soon? Perhaps tomorrow, perhaps six months from now. Call for Miss Hendricks. Call for Miss Hendricks. Excuse me. Certainly. Thank you. Put it on 28, Mary. Hello? Yes, as well as may be expected. Oh, his nephew came to see him and just left. What was that? Well, about 30, I should say. Six feet two, brown hair and gray eyes. Yes, I'll tell Mr. Mason. That was your business partner calling. Mr. Jackson wanted to know how you were getting along. Fine, aren't we? And that's my story and how I came to know Eddie Dante's. Well, what can I say? Maybe she's on the level and maybe she's not. Her story certainly fills out certain points I never did feel quite right about. Dottie's case always had too many loose ends to suit me. I'll go along. If I ever saw a defense attorney throw his case, it was our friend Earl Jackson. I've got nothing to lose. It's your neck that's sticking out, sister. A long way. And I'm guaranteeing nothing. Remember that. I'll take my chances now. Is that waiter still hanging around outside? Probably. He's been sticking on her trail like glue for the last few days. Well, don't let him know I'm in. I'll have the boys cover you. When she shakes you, don't let it look too easy. Right. Okay, on your way. And what comes next? Oh, as usual, I guess. Up all night. If you really have anything to tell us, I wish you'd tell me. Harry may not be back before evening. No, I'll come back.
Give us five minutes, Tyson, and then bring her up the office. Okay, Chief. Tyson, this is Jackson. Now, get this straight. We picked up Jean before she could spill to the cops. No, no, she didn't talk to Norris. She was waiting around to see Perry, but he wasn't there. Now, look, she's over at the Apex warehouse. Get over there and take care of her. I don't want her around, you understand? All right. Why the Dante's know we've got the dame? You'll find out when we get to the warehouse alley. Just drive away and thanks for going on. There he is. Easy, sister. Well, then let's go to the Apex warehouse. Tyson, you stay here with her. Don't you try anything funny. Now, uh, honey, you heard what the nice man said, so don't try anything funny. Because uh, I ain't got the heart to slug a dame. Especially a beautiful dame. You know, uh, I'm single. I can understand that. Uh, and then, of course, I can't get a dame. <laughs> I'm, I'm fickle.
Way, please. Might have worked if your wife hadn't been willing to gamble her freedom for yours. <laughs> Inspector, you know that was a frame up. We'll clear it off. There'll be no charges. You know, I thought something had gone wrong when I saw Eddie walking right into Jackson's gun. Sometimes cops aren't so dumb. They saw you shake Norris, but Jackson didn't know he had you covered every minute from the time he picked you up. Five squad cars on call, too. I thought it was closer than I figured. These are the rest of your goods. Yes, thanks. You know, it all seems awfully foolish for this junk. I believe that murder be done for a warehouse full of junk and building material. Tell me, Inspector, if this stuff has been here for 30 years, why hasn't it been sold for storage charges? Well, we checked on that. The original owner gave instructions that everything could be sold for storage charges except the chandeliers and wooden columns. Chandeliers and wooden columns, eh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Look at this. Inspector, Jean. Look, what are they? Diamonds, rare stones, emeralds. This broke, it's a chandelier, but this didn't. They're precious stones. Diamonds, rubies, sapphires, look. Jean, where are you going? What's the matter? Nothing, except I wish you didn't have so much money. Oh, I think you'll get used to it. Eddie, what? Papa's got something he wants to say to you. No? No. Please. <laughs> I'm a going to cook a big dinner, a spaghetti for everybody. See, everybody come, eat the plenty, drink the good wine, be happy. <laughs> you too, Mr. Flattery. I'll come, but I won't eat your spaghetti and I won't drink your wine and I won't be happy, but I'll come. You come, but you no know, eat and no drink it. No. Occupational disease. I must watch my ulcer. Oh, let's see. That's all right. Bring him a too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Papa. We'll be there. Now, would you mind uh, very much if I kissed you? It's all right. Go ahead, Dad. Thank you very much. You still are my wife. Technically. Yeah.